Using FreeCAD, we have the possibility to design almost any type of 3D model. This model is an example of that. In today's video, I will get you step by step to model this neural hardware cabinet in the main 3D modeling workbench of FreeCAD. Using the recent update of FreeCAD stable, the version 1.0.1. I hope you like this video. Let's go. In the start page of FreeCAD 1.0.1, create a new document pressing the empty file option available in the new file area. Just press empty file and create a part design body object pressing this icon and the new object will be added in the tree view. This object is very important in the part design workbench. It will record the creation history of the 3D model. Now, let's start designing the model creating two cylinders attached in the axis plane. To create the two cylinders, we will be using a primitive shape tool. We'll use the active cylinder tool available in the part design active tools. Just go to the active tools of part design, these tools here, and click on this arrow and you'll find this option, active cylinder. Click on here and first attach the cylinder in the axis plane. To do that, zoom in and click on the axis plane and as you see, now we have the cylinder attached in the axis plane. The next step is to change the view to the right. Just press this face here of this box and go to the test panel and change here the radius to 5.7 millimeters and the height to 130 millimeters and click off. The next step here is to center the cylinder in the axis plane. To center the cylinder in the axis plane, we will change the Z direction. Just go to the test panel, scroll down to attachment offset, go to Z duration, and minus 65 millimeters. And click off. And as you see, the cylinder is now centered on the axis plane. Now scroll up here and press OK. Press home in your keyboard and you'll see this. Next, let's create another cylinder attached in the axis plane. To do that, now we need to click on this icon, active cylinder. And also we need to attach this cylinder in the axis plane. Just zoom in and click on the axis plane. Zoom out and press right view and go to the test panel, change the radius to six millimeters and then the height to seven five millimeters and now scroll down to the attachment offset and go to z duration and change here to minus seven five divided by two and now we have the cylinder centered in the axis plane now press ok to finish this the surface of the cylinder here will be where we'll model the knurling now let's create another cylinder for this part here. Just click on the Active Cylinder tool and now this time the cylinder will be attached in the XY plane. So click in XY plane and now let's change to the right view here. The first thing that we are going to do is to reverse the duration of the cylinder. To do that go to the task panel, scroll down until you find the flip sides option and check it and scroll up now and change the radius to 5 millimeters and the height to 33 millimeters and now scroll down to attachment offset and we are going to change the value of the y-axis the y duration to minus 45 millimeters and click off let's set minus 45.5 millimeters and now scroll up here and okay now Press home on your keyboard and let's create the first sketch. Click on the create sketch icon and select YZ plane as the attachment plane for this sketch. First here on the sketch workbench, press this icon to switch to the session view. So in this way, you will be able to see this axis here, the horizontal axis. Zoom in here and select the external jump tool and extract this edge here. Now we can use this extracted A to place our geometry. To create a geometry, we will be using the rectangle tool. So select the rectangle tool on the sketch geometry, select, click on this icon and create this rectangle. Here we have this and we are going to use this sketch here to create this groove here, as you see. Go to the document and first here select the dimension tool. 
click on this line here click off and set the length of two millimeters and next click on this point here and now on this point here and set a vertical distance of one millimeters now zoom out here select this select this edge and exit this line here and create a distance of 10 millimeters and to full constrain this sketch we can select this line here and set a length of for example 5 millimeters and then close this sketch pressing this button and and now it's time to remove material using this sketch to do that we have first to select the sketch and then the groove icon and we have to fix the axis of this revolution operation to do that go to the task panel on axis click in here and select y axis as the axis of this operation now press ok next select this edge here and now the chamfer tool and the size of this chamfer will be one millimeters so press ok the next step is to mirror this cylinder this groove and this chamfer operation in this side to do that go to the task panel hold the control key and select this cylinder this groove and this chamfer and next select and next click on the mirror tool click on this icon go to the task panel in plane click here and select axi plane and now okay and we have this as you can see now rotate the view and zoom in here hold ctrl key and select this face and this face with this tool face selected we are going to create a threaded hole select the hole tool and then change to the right view and select this face here and express V plus T on the keyboard and now we can see what is happening in the model go to the task panel change the profile to isometric regular profile and change the size to this reference M4 and the depth of the hole to 16 millimeters and I'll click off and we'll have this if you want to model the thread, what you have to do is to check this option, the threaded option, and this option here, model thread, and then refresh the document. As you can see, for me, it's not working. I don't know why. So I will make the report video visible to see what is happening. So I go to view, and next I go to panels and report view. As you can see, this is the problem, and I don't know how to fix this. So I'm going to close the report view and then press and I'm going to uncheck the free dead option. And now I press OK to finish this. And now I will talk the transparency back. I select this face, for example, and I press V plus T on the keyboard and I have this. Now let's model the knurling on this face here. To do that, we are going to create a sketch on this face here first. So with this face selected, Click on the grid sketch icon, uh, zoom out here, and as you can see, we have a small problem here. Let's fix this. Switch to the session view, go to sketch jumps, and click in here, and now select triangle. And now click on the origin axis and create this geometry. What I'm going to do with this sketch here is to rotate the sketch in the attachment editor. Skip two times to leave this sketch, press home on the keyboard and now change to the front view, go to the model tab and select this sketch, right click and go to attachment editor option and now scroll down to go to the Z axis and change here to 108 degrees and now click off and scroll up and press OK. Now double click on this sketch and we have this. Now select this geometry and delete and now zoom in here, select polyline tool on the sketch jumps and create this geometry. Skip this tool and select these two lines and now make them equal and select these two lines again and now make them perpendicular and next select the dimension tool. Click on this line and set the length of one millimeters and now click on this point here and create a vertical distance of 5.7 millimeters. Next use the constraint constant to constrain this axis to constrain this point in the vertical axis and this sketch is full constrained as you see. Close this sketch, 
Now with this sketch selected, let's remove material on this model using the subtractive helix tool. Click on this icon and let's change to the and press home on your keyboard so you will see clearly the model. Okay, like this, and then go to the task panel, go to axis, change here first to y axis, and the page here set 150 millimeters and change the height to 75 millimeters and now click off and press ok here and as you can see this operation is starting to break the model as you can see we have this small failure here so let's see what's the problem with this operation to do that we have to go to the view and go to panels and here activate the report view just check this option and here we can see that the subtractive helix tool is showing this error here. Result is self intersecting I think we can solve this changing the pitch of this operation. Select the subtractive helix operation in the tree view and then on the and on its parameters go to pitch. And let's change here to for example 155 millimeters and enter. And we can see that we still have the same problem. Select the operation again and go to the page again. Uh, let's say 165 now and enter. And we still have the same problem. So I'm going to change here to 175 and see what happens. Enter. And now we can see that the problem disappeared. Okay, now I'm going to close the report view. And now I'm going to reuse the sketch. So I go to the subtractive helix operation, I click on its arrow and I select this sketch. And I will use this in the next operation. So I select the subtractive helix icon. And now I change the axis to Y axis. And I change the pitch to 175 and the height to 75 millimeters. And I check this option left handed and I have this as you can see. Now I press OK to finish the operation and now that I have these two operations done, I'm going to create a polar array of the two operations to create this new ring here. To do that, we need first to select the subtractive helix operation, the free subtractive helix operation and now hold Ctrl key and select the last subtractive helix operation. And now click on the polar pattern tool Fix of all, set the y-axis as the rotation axis of the polar pattern operation. Click here and select the y-axis. And I'll change the number of occurrence to 30. And click off. As you can see, here we have the new red surface. And what we have to do now is to finish the polar pattern operation. To do that, just press OK. And as you can see, this is the final model. No problems with the neural surface. So this is how you can use the part-time workbench to create free dead holes and to simulate neural surface in FreeCAD. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit like. And if you want to support the content of this channel, you can do that. Just go to the description of this video and you'll find a link to the channel's call fact page or you can support the channel buying their books that's appearing on the screen now thank you for watching this video i hope to see you in the next video thank you